Good evening and many thanks for joining us. This is QTV United News coming to you from our studios on Caraba Avenue with me, Antoine Sonyasi. Here are the main news headlines. Today, Friday, President Barrow received at his office a delegation of Alliance of Victim-led organizations who were at the presidency to discuss issues relating to victims of former President Jame's human rights violations. As the Kill Group Chronic and Azan competition is set for tomorrow at QCD in Bijilo, we look at how this intervention, which is promoting Islam, has grown to significantly impact people across the country. The leader of the Gambian delegation to the 6th ECOWAS Parliament, Bileji Tunkara, National Assembly Member for Kantora Constituency, has been elected fourth Deputy Speaker of the ECOWAS Parliament. And in giving back to its customers in this holy month of Ramadan, the Gambia Transport Service Corporation, GTSC, on Friday distributed iftar to their customers as part of their corporate social responsibility. In international news, the president of Zimbabwe has declared a national disaster to tackle the prolonged drought crisis. Well, stay tuned for more of these and other stories. Now, today, Friday, President Barrow received at his office a delegation of Alliance of Victim-led organizations who were at the presidency to discuss issues relating to victims of former President Jamia's human rights violations. Alicia reports. At the invitation of the president, this delegation of the Alliance of Victim-led organizations held what was more like a family meeting with President Barrow to discuss the plight of victims and the way forward. Sirandau. Chairperson of the Alliance of Victim-Led Organizations said the president gave assurances of his commitment to ensuring the welfare of victims are taken care of in terms of their health, compensation, and well-being. I think the most um, reassuring thing that I heard from the president was that his commitment is 100% plus. I really like the plus. <laughs> I really like the plus because it really tells us that he's going over and above and beyond to really make sure that victims are taken care of. And by victims, really... We're not just talking about the individuals who, are, who, are, who have been impacted directly, but we're talking about the whole, the whole plethora of, 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 of victims that have, we have in this country, including our, our, our services, including our processes, including our institutions who, are, who have been victimized and have been used by the previous government. Um, so we've really been very reassuring when I heard that uh, his, the political will, which has been emphasized, and we have we've seen demonstrate through all of the other um, you know, comment, comments and, and discussions that come out. He's, he's really demonstrated that the political will is there, and we're very much reassured. She said they will continue to work with the government. The Alliance of the Victim-Led Organizations was formally launched in January to harmonize the efforts and interventions of the various victims' organizations. Reporting for QTV News, I am Alou Sise. The holy month of Ramadan is characterized by dedication to worship, caring, and sharing. In recognition of this, the Q Group embarks on its largest philanthropic program promoting Islam and supporting households with essential food supplies. QTV's Mohamed Lamin Choi reports on how this intervention has grown to significantly impact people across the country. Ramadan is Islam's holiest month. The dominant practice in this blessed month are sharing, caring and worship. For the Q Group, this is an important opportunity to scale up its humanitarian efforts with its largest support outreach to Gambians called Kiundogo. Senior Manager Lamin Yafa is the head of the QSL Sales Department. Well, this intervention is the brainchild of our CEO. Um, from the inception in 2009 when we started QSL, that's when he came with this idea that every year we need to do something that is related to religion. And then we had our first Ndogu at the Kiusel building, where we invited 100 Imam, led by his late father, Imam Mas Ja. Uh, may Allah bless his soul. So from 2009, we have never um, um, scaled down this, this, uh, this uh, ceremony. From the QSL building, the Kiundogo has expanded to madrasas, mosques, hospitals and security installations covering 300 communities this year and marking the 16th anniversary. 
It was in Ramadan when the 114 chapters of the Holy Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad. In recognition of the significance of the Holy Quran being revealed to the Prophet, the Q Group established the Gambia's first ever national Quranic competition four years ago in partnership with the Supreme Islamic Council. The competition draws participants from madrasas in the seven regions of the country. Competition winners are awarded cash prizes. Ami Sise is the head of QSL Marketing. So this is a very personal legacy for the CEO as well. And therefore, every year we try to improve on what we do. And I think as well, most of these madrasas are somehow overlooked when it, um, when it comes to education. And what they do is as important as what we do in you know, civil education as well. So we want people to understand the importance of these madrasas and the knowledge that they instill in these children. And hence the reason we're doing this in such a large scale. Like the Kyundogo, the Q Group's national Quranic competition keeps growing, covering more schools and contestants across the regions and televised on QTV, allowing Gambians to discover talented Quranic reciters. Moving on, in 2024, the Q Group marks another piece of history by hosting Gambia's first ever Azan competition. Azan is Islam's way of calling Muslims to prayer. <laughs> At the Kew City grounds in Bijilo, preparations are in full swing for the grand finale of both the national Azan and Quranic competitions. Islamic scholars, judges, students, contestants and their parents are expected at this major event, which is scheduled for Saturday, the 6th of April. These three interventions by the Kew Group are in keeping with Ramadan's features of generosity, care and worship. Mahmoud Lamin Choi, QTV News. And from the report there by Mahmoud Lamin Choi, we take a short commercial break, but we will be right back. The art of juggling is a true spectacle of agility, coordination, and speed. A symbol of progression, precision, and mastery. Five G speed is like having the juggler in your pocket. With lightning fast download and upload speeds, you'll easily be able to juggle even the busiest workdays. Whether you're a busy entrepreneur, a creative, or just someone who wants to stay connected, juggle your tasks with ease with QCell 5G speed. The future is here. It's fast, reliable, and efficient. First brought to you by QCell. We innovate, others follow. Welcome back. The leader of the Gambian delegation to the 6th ECOWAS Parliament, Bileji Tunkara, National Assembly member for Kantora constituency, has been elected fourth deputy speaker of the ECOWAS Parliament for a four-year term. Alusisa reports. The 6th legislature of the ECOWAS was inaugurated at the seat of the ECOWAS Parliament in Abuja on Thursday, attended by Nigeria's President Bola Tinibu, who is the current chairman of the Authority Office of State and Government of ECOWAS, and ECOWAS Commission President Dr. Omar Ali Uture. The term of the fifth legislature ended on 8 March 2024, allowing member states to send their chosen members to the sixth legislature. Honorable Tunkara was sworn in with Alaji Esdabo, Maimuna Sise, Amadou Kamara, and Sirif Sar, who formed the Gambia's five member delegation to the community parliament. The election of Bilaji Tunkara and three other deputy speakers took a lot of lobbying and negotiation. Speaking to QTV, Honorable Tunkara, who is also the majority leader at the national parliament, thanked the ECOWAS parliamentarians for the trust and promised to live up to expectations. He also thanked President Barrow, Speaker Fabakar Trembong Jata, and colleagues at the national parliament for nominating him to the community parliament and for supporting his bid for the position. This is the first time in the history of the ECOWAS parliament uh, someone to assume the leadership position of the ECOWAS parliament at my age. So therefore, I thank all the countries 
that stood uh, beside me in solidarity to vote me yesterday as the fourth deputy speaker. And I hope and pray we we'll live up to the expectation. There are thousands and thousands of you know, um, challenges ahead, but with commitment and dedication, we will move the mountain. The three other deputy speakers are Barao Jibrin from Nigeria as first deputy speaker, Ajira Tukulibali from Ivory Coast as second deputy speaker, and Afenyo Makin from Ghana as third deputy speaker. Nigeria's President Bola Ahmed Tinibu and ECOWAS Commission President Dr. Omar Ali Uture encourage the sixth legislature to live by their oaths and serve as advocates for a united and progressive subregion. It is our responsibility to speak with one voice and make African Union from ECOWAS a central point of economic reform and foreign policy achievement. The disintegration will not only disturb the freedom of movement and establishment of people, it will also aggravate insecurity of the region. More specifically, the withdrawal will affect security cooperation in terms of sharing intelligence and participation in regional counter-terrorism the Republic of Togo, whose turn it is to produce the Speaker of the Sixth Parliament, is yet to produce its list. Hence, the first Deputy Speaker will continue to preside as Speaker. Togo is yet to have their parliamentary elections, which was initially slated for April 20, 2024, but has been postponed to a later date. Outgoing Speaker Sidi Mohamed Tunis promised to engage authorities in Togo. We will proceed to Togo to have a conversation with the authorities there with a view to encouraging them to have their delegation inaugurated as soon as possible so that we can have a speaker to run this institution. The ECOWAS Parliament is a representative assembly of the people of the community with 115 seats. Reporting for QTV News, I am Aliou Sise. Now, in giving back to its customers in this holy month of Ramadan, the Gambia Transport Service Corporation, GTSC, on Friday distributed iftar to their customers as part of their corporate social responsibility. Mumuru Gadega attended the event at GTSC headquarters in Kanifing and Hina reports. Over 500 GTSC clients will receive food parcels, sugar and water from various operation zones throughout the country and those visiting Dakar. As part of their yearly Ramadan iftar giveaway, numerous clients received theirs at the company's office in Kanifing. Moro Sonko is a passenger traveling to the provinces. He praised the company for offering iftar to them. I've been sick for some time, and I regularly come for appointments at the Edward Francis Moore Teaching Hospital. Having people distributing food is very good and I hope this good gesture continues. The GTSC offers safe and reliable transportation services to customers who commute throughout the country and beyond, utilizing their services. This one is about giving back to their customers as part of their corporate social responsibility. Modulamin Fati, marketing officer, says clients are crucial and some of them may still be traveling when it is time for iftar. Something that has been going on yearly since inception of GTSC and it's customary and it's geared towards giving back to our customers as a form of corporate social responsibility. GTSC values their customers and our passengers for actually patronizing our service throughout these years. And that being the case, we thought it wise to always give these things, uh, the sugar, uh, um, dates and some parcel with chicken so that some of them would be uh, breaking their fast whilst they are on their way to journey. Today we have distributed in the Dakar service that will be going to Dakar and probably before they're getting uh, reaching to Dakar it would be iftar time and they could use some of those uh, provisions to break their fast. The holy month of Ramadan is considered sacred by Muslims. Many provide food, charity and perform other good gestures. It's a voluntary act of charity which is giving for the sole purpose of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without expecting anything in return. Mumudu Gajaga, QTV News. And a report there by Mumudu Gajaga will take us to the international break in a moment.
Now, the president of Zimbabwe declared a national disaster on Wednesday to tackle the prolonged drought crisis. President Manangagwa said the country need $2 billion in aid to help millions of people who are food insecure. Julian Jai has the rest of that story. Emerson Minangagua made this declaration following a severe drought spell induced by complex weather patterns resulting from variations in ozone temperatures in the equatorial Pacific, which is causing havoc across southern Africa. The green shortage has pushed up food prices and an estimated 2.7 million people will face hunger. Neighboring Zambia and Malawi have also recently declared states of disasters due to drought. Some fear that the drought sweep in southern Africa will be one of the worst in decades. The World Food Programme estimates indicate that 13.6 million people are currently experiencing crisis level of food insecurity in the region. President Minangagua told reporters that Zimbabwe is expecting a harvest of 868,000 metric tons of grain this year which is far short of expectations and about 680,000 tons less than the country needs. Minangagwa told journalists the government's top priority is securing food for all Zimbabweans because no Zimbabwean must succumb to or die from hunger. According to VOA, the UN pledges its support to the government of Zimbabwe in mobilizing resources to tackle the food insecurity and efforts are underway to finalize a response plan focusing on food security, health, education, shelter, and other essential areas to address the needs of those affected by the crisis. Zimbabwe is already grappling with high inflation driven by food prices. The country now joins a regional struggle to find enough maize on the international market. The lack of rain has also affected electricity production, as Zimbabwe relies on hydroelectric power. Zimbabwe was once the breadbasket of Southern Africa. However, in recent years, the country has suffered severe drought affecting crop and cattle. For QTV News, I am Julian Yai. And that's it for this edition of the news. But before we take a leave of you, here's a recap from main headlines. Today, Friday, President Barrow received at his office a delegation of Alliance of Victim-Led Organizations to discuss issues relating to victims of former President Jammeh's human rights violations. As the Q Group Chronic and Azan competition is set for tomorrow at Q City in Bijelo, we looked at how this intervention is promoting Islam has grown to significantly impact people across the country. The leader of the Gambian delegation to the sixth ECOWAS Parliament, Pileji Tonkara, National Assembly member for Controller Constituency, has been elected Deputy Speaker, fourth Deputy Speaker rather, of the ECOWAS Parliament. And in giving back to its customers in this holy month of Ramadan, the Gambia Transport Service Corporation, GTSC, on Friday distributed iftar to their customers as part of their corporate social responsibility. And in international news, the president of Zimbabwe has declared a national disaster to tackle the prolonged drought crisis. That's it for this edition of the news. To join us tomorrow, same time for more news. Thanks for watching.